bear this in mind. Young people cannot be trusted to form their own opinions. This business about open-mindedness is nonsense. It's a waste of time trying to teach students who think for themselves. It's our job to tell them. Houston, we have a problem. Problem-based learning belongs to a constellation of broadly constructivist, student-centered pedagogical approaches that include inquiry learning, discovery learning, project-based learning, and problem-based learning. All of these approaches can be seen as a response to the growing sense that traditional teacher-centered learning approaches were failing to help students develop intrinsic motivation and problem-solving skills. Problem-based learning originated within medical schools. It was first used at McMaster University by Howard Barrows and colleagues in the late 1960s. But today, PBL has taken off as a pedagogical approach in elementary and high schools as well. The goals of PBL are to increase student motivation, to develop effective problem-solving skills, to develop self-directed learning, lifelong learning skills, to encourage students to construct an extensive and flexible knowledge base, and to help students become effective collaborators. All right, stop, collaborate, and listen. PBL is focused experiential learning, organized around the investigation, explanation, and resolution of meaningful problems. In PBL, students work in small collaborative groups and learn what they need to know in order to solve a problem. The teacher act, acts as a facilitator to guide student learning through the learning cycle. If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves it. The problem-based learning model, as described by Burroughs, has five phases. The first phase is presenting the problem scenario. The problem is the focus for acquiring knowledge and reasoning strategies. Learners are presented with a problem and through discussions with their group, activate their prior knowledge. The second phase is to identify relevant facts. The fact identification step helps students represent the problem. Within their groups, they develop possible theories or hypotheses to explain the problem. The third phase is identifying knowledge deficiencies relative to the problem. Together, they identify learning issues to be researched. They construct a shared primary model to explain the problem at hand. Facilitators provide scaffold, which is a framework on which students can construct knowledge relating to the problem. The fourth phase is when these knowledge deficiencies become what are known as the learning issues that students research during their self-directed learning. The fifth and final stage is to apply their new knowledge and evaluate their hypotheses in light of what they have learned. At the completion of each problem, students reflect on the abstract knowledge gain. The teacher helps students learn the cognitive skills needed for problem solving and collaboration. We may never settle the question of which comes first, the chicken or the egg, the acorn or the oak. A math example of problem-based learning is an assignment developed by Alfred Solis, a math teacher at High Tech High in San Diego, California. For this assignment, students were asked to use their knowledge of graphing lines in Excel to draw a mathematical portrait of one of these historical personalities, such as Descartes, Alexander the Great, or Moses. In this example, Phase one is when the students are given the scenario in which they have to draw the face of their chosen historical figure. Phase two is when the students predict what slope lines represent the best features for the nose, eyes, mouth, and other details. And phase three is when the students decide what the coordinates of the points are so they will draw the lines effectively. Phase four is when the students research the slope of each line and adjust the points as they keep drawing. As they work on the project, they keep track of the number of lines used in their graphic. Phase 5 is identified at the completion of this project when the students reflect on the image they created and on the knowledge they gained while doing it. You know, from the time I started teaching, I tried to move in this direction. 
and I tried to get better at doing this. Uh, you know, because the essential problem is that for many students, learning mathematics is like being taken down a long dark tunnel with no idea where you're going. That's what we do to students and they get lost along the way. We test them and we ask them what they've learned during their travels. Problem-based learning in small groups is a huge part of the education at Phillips Exeter. Uh, they use this amazing system called the Harkness philosophy of teaching. The picture that you're looking at here was in the Globe and Mail the other day. And this was about uh, the LRT fleet in Toronto. Uh, this could be used as a PBL activity. So you could provide this to students and you could ask them some questions. Um, is, is there a relationship uh, between the length of these vehicles and the number of seats? So what is the relationship? So the, the problem could be to take this data and figure it out and then maybe extrapolate it to some other LRT of a different length, maybe 50 meters long. And you know, how many seats would there be on that? The average speed, uh, how do they calculate that? Uh, how did they work that out? So you could begin a lesson with this and have some problems, you know, brought up about this and then have students figure out what they need to know in order to solve these problems. And then that begins the chapter. So the things they need to know, that's what you work on. That's what you teach them and that's what they learn. It's a beautiful way of teaching mathematics and it, it's something that we need to move in the direction of. Problem-based learning really gives students an experience that's opposite to the tunnel experience.